Good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder and this is BRN AM for Monday, October 12, 2020. And our top story today, COVID is causing pain for some of the nation's largest not-for-profits. And joining me now to discuss this and more is Natalie Walters. She's a journalist with the Dallas Morning News. Natalie, thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a bit. Yeah, it has been a bit, but I uh, hope you and the family are doing well during these very trying times. Really happy that you could join us. And uh, as as I mentioned, you, you are part of the Dallas Morning News and you're writing regular pieces. One of the pieces that I thought was extremely interesting that I wanted to discuss today across our two segments is the impact of the coronavirus and the pandemic on charities and charitable do- donations. You wrote a a big piece about this in the Dallas Morning News. What can you tell us? <clears throat> right. So, you know, there's been a lot of focus on how businesses are being affected, but nonprofits are being affected just as badly at a time when they are most needed. That's sort of been the theme across, if you've seen the articles written about this industry right now. And, you know, with so with this being also an economic, um, you know, I don't know what the right word for this. What am I thinking of? An economic um, like pandemic. Downturn is, or a pa- yeah, right, the downturn. pandemic's impact on, ec- on the economy. Exactly. Um, and, you know, so many people unemployed for the first time in their lives. You know, so many people need help right now, whether that's food, shelter, rental assistance. Um, you know, and so they're reaching out to these charities who um, are suffering because with because people don't have so much money, they're not giving to these charities and especially corporations, you know, a corporation is going to look after its employees first as it should before it gives to charities. And with so much uncertainty right now, they're pulling back on their giving. And so these charities are suffering and, you know, so many of them are going through layoffs as well, but because, you know, they don't, they're not filing um, public documents with the SEC and, you know, they're not, talked about as much in the media people I think it's sort of a turning a not going to say turning a blind eye to it but it's sort of a hidden story right now and the nonprofit sector is the third largest workforce in the U.S. which I think most people don't know it's there's more people than the nation's manufacturers and so this is a huge workforce and you know talking to employees in the nonprofit sector they are worried about being laid off and, you know, no um, nonprofit is safe. You know, I'm sure there's many small nonprofits that are, or I know, that have been have to been disbanded already that are, yeah. you know, kaput now because they, they couldn't survive. But, you know, my article focused on some of the more well-known names because I felt like readers would, you know, pay attention. You know, you always want to... Um, be sure people read your article so it has an effect on people can help change. And so we focused on some more well-known charities. And we started with just wanting to talk to charities in Texas, obviously, for the Dallas Morning News. But the more I talked to people, the more I realized it was such a problem. And everyone I talked to said, I'm so glad you're doing this article. Um, You know, I really hope this goes somewhere. And I, I started realizing that this is a bigger story. So we reached out to, we started to think let's make this more of a national story and just talk to you know five or six of the biggest nonprofits. and you know I'll, I'll just mention a few um so susan g komen is the breast cancer nonprofit. Yep. And they laid off 20 percent of their staff they cut pay across the board and they gave up their dallas office and they consolidated their nearly 60 entities into a single charity and so wow. all that is huge you know that's yeah. you know every charity will tell me that Obviously, this is the biggest event they've ever had to deal with, the biggest challenge they've ever had to deal with. And to give up your office to save money and to consolidate all 60 entities. So now they only need to hire, you know, one marketing person instead of 60. So this will really help them. Um, And, you know, there's this great quote that the CEO of Susan Komen gave me. She said, we've made more major decisions in the past 120 days than the previous 15 years. 
but we will be here at the other end. So yeah. it seems well, to be that seems to be the theme is that they're going through these huge changes and cuts, but the bigger ones at least think they'll be here at the end. Yeah, and I'm sorry to mean to interrupt you. I, I would, you know, going back to before you and I were, you know, were chatting about um, bringing you, you know, back on the show. We had the tax cuts, um, and I know there was concern uh, from a lot of charities that donations were going to dry up because of the way the tax laws had changed. Now you lump in not only that, but you lump in what's happening. And I guess my concern, or maybe I'm going to get your perspective about this, but I would think there'd be a lot of concern about some of these smaller charities. I, you know, we certainly think that. American Lung Association, American Heart Association, Susan G. Komen, and others. They're big organizations. They will survive, but in a different shape. But smaller uh, soup kitchens and smaller charities that deal more either regionally or in the communities, they're at greater risk. And without that apparatus, there's going to be many Americans out there who are just going to be left nowhere to go. They're going to be going towards probably government, I would think. Oh, yes, absolutely. You, you know, with the tax cuts, there's been a push for many nonprofits to get legislation passed that would help with that issue and that would also, um, you know, come up with a, a, a government COVID relief program that would specifically include nonprofits because mm -hmm. <clears throat> the problem has been that, you know, the, the two COVID relief programs, the PPP program and the Main Street Lending program, the Main Street program is from the Federal Reserve, but it's part of the CARES Act. Uh, you know, two of those two programs left out some of the biggest nonprofits. You know, the American Heart Association was left out of PPP because it had too many employees to qualify for that since it was mainly meant for small businesses. And they were left out of the Main Street program because too much of their money comes from donations. You know, obviously that's going to cut out a lot of nonprofits. So, you know, they want to be sure, you know, like what I heard from a lot of nonprofits is that they can sometimes be left out of the policy making table because like we talked at the beginning, they're not businesses and, you know, people sometimes they're put on the back burner. And so um, they've this year, they've sort of had to pull up their own chair to the policy making table and say, we need to be included in this. We are also hurting and America needs us more than ever. But in order for us to do our job and you know provide food for these people, we need help right now too, because we're having to cut staff and, at a time when we're most needed. So hopefully that legislation can get passed so they so that all charities can be included in um, you know, the second or, you know, the next part of the CARES Act. Um, yeah, and you know, I definitely for the smaller nonprofits, you know, I was looking at those articles, there was a a great quote um, I got from the National Council of Nonprofits CEO Tim Delaney, where he said, um, I don't know if I can find it here, but he basically said that absolutely he expects many of the smaller nonprofits to yeah. go out of business. Um, and he knows many that already have. Um, and it is very sad because we, you know, especially during a pandemic, more than anything, that you know, we should care about the basic needs of people being met. You know, we don't want people being, you know, especially with winter coming, you don't want people on the street right now and you know, we need to be helping people. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of effect here in the social aspect of America. And, and not only here, but probably abroad as well. Natalie, I want to go to a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk more with Natalie about the impact of COVID on not-for-profits and charities. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? 
especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. The windows on our homes, they protect us and the ones we love, but they do much more. At Renewal by Anderson, making your home more comfortable is at the center of every window we make. It's why we custom build our windows in America and install them in as little as one day. It's why we build our frames with exclusive Fibrex composite material that's two times stronger than vinyl. It's why our glass helps keep your home warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and quieter all year long. It's why we stand behind every window with a 20-year limited warranty. Why not help lower your energy costs while giving your home and family the best? Call 1-800-835-6525 to schedule a free in-home consultation. Buy one, get one at 40% off with this special offer. Plus, get special financing with no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for one full year. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-835-6525 now. Welcome back. We're talking to Natalie Walters. She's a journalist with the Dallas Morning News. Natalie, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. So as I alluded, as you know, going into the commercial break, I mean, this has a dramatic impact. We talk about the ramifications of COVID. And as you said, a lot of talk, a lot of talk about keeping people employed with small and large businesses, obviously very important. We've talked about the impact of government tax receipts down state, local governments having to do more with less. That's a common theme. The one thing we haven't heard is about not for profits. Your story really kind of brings that out, but not for profits for a represent a very important part of the fabric of the United States. We're very charitable people. We not only give to our own, but we give abroad. Um, you know, what, what do you think about the social implications here? Uh, you kind of alluded to it when we went to the commercial break about people possibly being on the streets. But what are some of the larger, longer term social aspects to all this? Yeah, definitely. There's been, you know, I've been looking into homelessness recently. There's been a huge uptick in that. And, you know, m many people are worried about that with the winter coming and that there's not enough room in shelters right now. And, you know, because shelters right now, the way they're set up, you know, it, it was close quarters, but with COVID, now the CDC has new regulations where you need to have people six feet apart and in, in <coughs> places like that. So, you know, these are huge implications. And, you know, when, when you talk about people that are sort of put on the back burner, you, you also think of, you know, um, low income people as well that are often ignored you know, whereas businesses are always at the forefront um, of media yeah. and of, you know, of government help as well. So I think this is, you know, a big turning point for the country and, a, you know, huge decisions need to be made in the, the next few months. Um, you know, people are hurting real, real bad right now and need a lot of help. And it was, with each nonprofit, it was interesting because each one deals with a different um, issue, you know, whether it's breast cancer, um, you know, children with cancer. And so each of them is seeing the unique problems coming up with the population that they target. And, yeah. and so with, you know, the breast, the cancer nonprofits, they're saying, you know, there's people that are finding out in a pandemic that they have cancer and they're isolated and they don't know if they'll be able to go in for treatment right now because hospitals are overwhelmed or they don't know if they can do it safely. And, you know, obviously people with cancer are already immunocompromised. And so they said it's incredibly scary. And they're, um, I talked to three nonprofits who said their helpline is busier than it's ever been 
by, you know, tenfold because people are isolated and scared and depressed. And, um, you know, with Make-A-Wish Foundation, they obviously help children who have cancer and they their mission is that they fulfill one wish for for each child and that wish you know there's been evidence shown that um you know if the wish is truly you know their their biggest wish that it can really help them get better and yeah. but now you know 70 i believe it was let's see 80 percent of the wishes involved travel before the pandemic well obviously now most travel is canceled Plus, they would have canceled it anyway because their clients are immunocompromised. Right. So they those wishes have had to be put on hold, and you know the children have been looking forward to that. No longer have something to look forward to. Um, and something I thought that was kind of funny is that fifty four percent of the wishes um, pre pandemic were Disney related, and uh, <laughs> I just thought that was kind of sweet because you do always think of Disney when you think of Make a Wish, um, and that's not a yeah, it's Everyone not a stereotype. To... It's true. They they really are. It's um... either sports figures or Snow White and Cinderella and probably the Marvel universe. Now, I want to ask you, uh, one of the things that we've talked about on this program re- repeatedly is how businesses and governments have adapted with technology. Is it your sense from talking with some of these CEOs and, and influencers within the not-for-profit space that they're using more technology to solicit donations, I mean, things like Venmo and uh, PayPal and probably other things that I can't list or remember. Um, how has technology impacted um, the industry now? Right, I didn't hear anyone mention specifically Venmo or, anything, or something like that. I think most, you know, probably send people to their website to donate, mm-hmm. but yes, a lot of them are, start, you know, are moving to virtual events now and, you know, even they're having virtual sort of galas, um, you know, or in virtual races, you know, where Mm -hmm. you run at home and you're kind of tuned into a live stream. Um, Or, you know, there's some races where you kind of run on your own and then you enter your your stats and such. So, and all of them know that, you know, virtual events are obviously not as engaging as in-person events and that they're not going to raise as much money um, and they've just sort of accepted that, but they're, you know, doing the best that they can is, is sort of the, the feeling there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Natalie, we're going to leave it here. Obviously this is an incredibly important topic. Great. Glad that you were able to bring this to light. Hopefully it continues to bubble up and hopefully lawmakers uh, can do something in terms of some COVID relief to help some of these smaller not-for-profits. Natalie Walters, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning and enjoy the rest of your week and have a great weekend. Thank you so much. It was so great to be back. And, you know, I told you this before the show, but I had a little sore throat. You may have heard it in the show. Um, And some, you know, a few minor symptoms, but I'm going to get tested this morning. So just an important reminder that now that tests are um, in good supply now, you can get results quickly. It's important to get tested if you you think you might have any symptoms. And thanks for having me. Hope to be back soon. Absolutely. I see you as a COVID not, <laughs> not-for-profit advocate, Natalie. Great to see you and Thank enjoy. You. Good luck with the test and we'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest or someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the news in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, and so much more, check out today's edition of The Morning Pulse. And you can also check out our top four stories of the day on Flipboard. Just go to flipboard.com. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the change. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. 
The tax doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.